Alright, I'm going to show you how to solder together one of my logic boards. And uh, first off, we're going to go through the parts. Of course, you need the logic board. Now, I'm going to be using the one that I already soldered the USB, the serial chip, the FT232RL, uh, in the other video. So I'll be using that one. Um, and, you know, there'll be a little bit of small differences in the traces and whatnot. Uh, from the version that I uh, released compared to this version. Uh, there was a problem where the large USB connector uh, was actually backwards and so it didn't work very well. Uh, but beyond that everything should be pretty much identical. And some of the other parts here. Let's see if I can focus in and see this here. First off we have A 74HC165N. And you will see that is a 16 pin chip. Next we have the 74HC164N. And that is a 14 pin chip. Next we have the Maxon chip. Um, you can use two different chips. You can use the Max 7219 or the Max 7221. And uh, I'm actually going to be using the 221 since everybody seems to use the 219. Uh, I'll use the 221 to show that it actually does work. It's a pretty much identical chip. Uh, it's a little bit different in the way that you can uh, communicate to it through a microcontroller, but that makes no difference to us. Finally, the microcontroller itself, uh, an 18 mega, uh, 168 or 328. Uh, this is a 328. And uh, I would highly recommend getting one that uh, has the bootloader preloaded. Uh, just makes everything a little bit easier. Uh, this one actually does not. And uh, if I have the actual time here to fit in the video and whatnot, I'm sure there'll be lots of spicing and cutting to get this to fit in the 10 minutes of a YouTube video. But uh, I'll show you a quick demonstration on how to burn the bootloader uh, using AVR Studio to the chip itself. Alright, next off we have 5.1 microfarad capacitors. And you'll see actually my last one's a little bit different. Um, I'm just using some leftover ones I had. So it's uh, pretty much all the same. And if you look closely, which I'm sure you'll never be able to see in the video, but uh, they should actually have a 104 on it. And that'll indicate the correct size. Next we have four 1K resistors. Um, these are actually 1 6th watts, so they're a little bit smaller. Uh, you can see the one next to it is a 1 4th watt. Um, again, it doesn't make any difference. 1 6th, 1 4th, it's not going to hurt anything either way. Uh, also, if uh, you have a, a 900 ohm or a 1.1K or something very close, it's not going to make any difference. Either one will work. Um, and as long as you have, for the 1K, as long as you have anywhere from probably uh, a 330 ohm and up, it'll probably be just fine. Uh, the blue one here is a 20 kilo ohm resistor, and that is used to actually control the brightness of the actual LEDs on the Arduino itself. And um, this is actually something you could actually put a larger uh, resistor in there and get a dimmer brightness if you wanted. And uh, if you wanted a brighter you can go probably as low as a 10k but if you go any lower you're going to try overdraw on the USB power and you're going to have plenty of problems because the computer won't be able to supply the right power. So I would recommend at least a 20k. And uh, if you want to go dimmer you can go up to 100k no problem. Alright, I have a couple LEDs here. These are standard blue LEDs. Um, just some extra ones I had laying around. Uh, you can use any color, any type, uh, 5 millimeter or 3 millimeter, either one will work. And right above it you see the resistor network. And most people seem to get a 10 pin one. That seems to be a lot easier to find. Uh, this is an actual 9 pin one. Um, if you have the 10 pin version, it's, there's enough room on the board that you can just take the last pin and cut it off. And um, I'll show you which or how to identify the pins uh, later on in the video of which one to remove. Then we have a 16 
megahertz resonator and make sure you use the 16 megahertz um, while the chip itself can actually run up to 20 um, the Arduino boot loader is uh, written for 16 megahertz and if you use anything um, above that your board will not work and then we have the mini um, this is mini right yes mini USB um, adapter this is a AB type AB type Let's see if I can get the front here the AB type is actually a little bit different shape than an A or a B um, this actually accepts both uh, it doesn't really make a difference. There's a very, very minimal difference between them. You get either one, it'll be fine. Also, we have a couple header pins. You can use a right angle like these. You can use straight. Um, I would probably recommend ones that have a little bit shorter tail. You can see these kind of have... Let me get this to stand up here. Kind of a long tail. So you end up cutting a lot of it off. Yeah, I'm not quite sure where I got these from, but it doesn't make any difference. You can just cut it off, so anything will work. And typically they come in a long chain. I just already broke these into the right segments. Here's a uh, full length version. It's probably 40 pins. 40 or 36 is their typical size. And uh, you can, you know, get these occasionally in an electronic store over buying it online. I know if you have a Fry's Electronics nearby, you can pick these up. They do carry them. They also carry the next part, the sockets. Um, I'll actually not be using the sockets. I'm building this one uh, because I'm building it for as thin as possible to fit in my uh, 128 kit that I already have the mountain boards with. And um, you will need a 28 pin for the AT Mega, a 14 pin for the 74HC14, a 16 pin for the 74HC15, and one that I'm missing, I actually don't have, is a 24 pin for the Maxim chip. Now, if you decide to go the other route on the USB connection, um, this is the, the ftdichip.com. Um, this is the module that you can use, and uh, it's actually called the UM232. Uh, I believe it's UM232R. Um, but if you leave the R off, you'll find it. And um, this will actually replace the chip that's on the logic board that's so you don't have to solder the uh, SMT chip. And you can see that chip and that chip are the same thing. It's kind of like a little breakout with the plug already on there. This is a standard larger plug if you prefer that type. And uh, just leave the jumpers in the default settings and it'll work just fine. Uh, if you want to socket it, you have to get a double width socket. This is a 24 pin double width socket. Let me get the other sockets here. You can see it's pretty much twice the width, two standard sockets. And uh, it's actually, uh, I believe, 0.6 spacing is what the spacing is on it. And uh, they're pretty easy to find. You can get them online at Mouse or DigiKey, either, uh, either place will have them. And this will plug right in there. And um, next we'll go on to uh, the assembly.